Hey, what's up everyone? In this tutorial, we're going to model this bracket. It looks complicated, but if we break it down, it's actually quite simple. We'll start by opening up a new part file, making sure that our units are set to millimeters, grams, seconds. Alright, and we are going to open up a new sketch on our front plane. And we're going to draw the two main cylindrical features here. We'll put the larger one with the keyway at our origin. So we're just going to create a circle there. And then the smaller one is a little bit to the right, just like that. And we'll add some dimensions to fully define these. So the larger circle diameter is 60 millimeters. The smaller is 42. They are 105 millimeters apart. And we're still not fully defined. To see why, the best thing you can do is actually try and move whatever feature is undefined or showing in blue. So let's just see why this isn't defined grab our origin for our small circle and as you see the distance between the center points of the two circles is fixed but the position of the smaller circle is not so to fix this we're going to hold control and select both center points and create a horizontal relationship Alright, now our sketches are fully defined. And without closing our sketch, we're going to add the main arcs for the connecting feature between our two cylinders. And we're going to use a simple three-point arc to do that. So we'll make the bottom one first. We'll click on the larger circle. Then the smaller and somewhere in the middle to try and eyeball the shape. Okay. And we'll do the same on the top. Just like that. Alright. And we'll hit escape to close out this feature. Now we want these arcs to be tangent to both circles. So to do this we're going to hold control, select the circle, and the arc, which I already had selected, and in tangent, and repeat on this side, and again on the bottom. Okay. So now they are tangent, but they are still not defined. We need to add some radii. So the bottom arc is 60 millimeters, and the top arc is 115 millimeters. Alright, so now we have a fully defined sketch. You can see right here, fully defined. So let's exit our sketch and start creating our solid body. So we'll do an extruded boss base. And we will select sketch one. Now we need to pick our contours because we have three closed contours in this sketch. We have the larger circle, the center portion, and the smaller circle. So since the two cylindrical features are the same length, we'll select both of those. We'll set our direction to be mid-plane, and we'll set our distance to be 20 millimeters. And we'll hit OK. Alright, now we need to create another... Now we need to do another extruded boss space for the connecting portion of our part. So we'll select extrude boss space extend out 
our boss extrude one to show sketch one. We'll click that. And for our selected contours, we'll select our middle contour. We'll set it to mid body for our direction. And we'll have a distance of 10 millimeters. I like to use the mid body tool because it keeps the part centered about the three primary planes which just makes life easier down the road and is a good modeling practice. Okay, that looks good. We'll hit OK. Alright, now we have our basic solid feature. Looks kind of like one of those motorcycles from Tron. And now we need to start carving away at it because we have a Q8 hole in the large cylinder a simple through hole in the smaller cylinder and the center part here is removed from our connecting portion. Alright, so let's work on that first. So let's open up a new sketch on the front plane and we will go normal too, like so. Alright. So the through hole is 8 millimeters from the upper and lower arc. So to do that, we're going to do an offset entities. And we'll pin it, because we're going to have to do two of these. We can't do it in one step. So we'll set our distance to 8 millimeters. And click this top arc here. And you see it's going in the wrong direction. So what we're going to have to do is reverse it, like so. That looks good. So let's hit OK. And since we pinned the tool, it's uh, staying open. So now we'll select our bottom arc here. It saves the 8 millimeters, but since we hit the reverse check for the first one, now this one is going in the incorrect direction. So we'll uncheck that. And yeah, that looks good. So let's hit OK. So now we have our two arced faces. And it looks like it is flush with both cylinders for this section here and there. So to create that, we're going to use our Convert Entities tool. And we'll simply select both of these edges here. and hit OK. Alright, and we're going to use our trim tool to cut away at any unnecessary line segments. So we'll use our power trim. Just cut away at all of this and all of this. Alright, so now we have our nice closed loop that is fully defined. So we'll hit OK, exit our sketch, do an extruded cut, and for our direction, we'll go through all in both directions. So I'll cut away all of the material throughout the entire length of the part in both directions, and hit OK. Alright. Now let's add in our key weight hole. So again, we're going to do another sketch on the front plane, and we'll go normal too. And we'll create a simple center point circle centered at the origin. And we'll set this diameter to be 30 millimeters. And we'll add a little center point rectangle at this top point of our circle, like that. Hit escape to close the tool. And this guy has a width of 8 millimeters. Alright. And we need to dimension from this top edge to the bottom edge of the circle. So we'll click 
that top line there. And holding shift will hover over the circle edge down here till we get the dimension we want. Click. Alright. And we'll set this to be 33. But now we have multiple contours here, so we want to clean this up a bit. So we'll zoom in, and we're going to use our trimming tool again. But this time we're going to check these two options down here. The first is to keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. So basically anything you trim becomes a construction line. And the second is to ignore trimming of construction lines. So if you run over, say, these construction lines here, it won't trim them, they'll just ignore them. So we're going to check both of these, because sometimes when you trim these uh, center point squares, it causes some errors, and we don't want that. So we'll just create some construction geometry to create a single closed loop. All right. And we'll exit our sketch and do an extruded cut again through all in both directions. And you do that because if down the road you change the width of the part, it won't cause any design errors. For example, if you did a, a blind distance and it didn't go all the way through once the width was changed. a little step to make your life easier down the road. Alright, and we'll do the through hole in the smaller cylinder there. Again, doing another sketch on our front plane. Normal 2. And this one should be pretty easy, so I just kind of hover over the edge of the part and it gives us our center point to latch on to, and we'll set our diameter to be 20 millimeters. Exit our sketch, do an extruded cut, and again, through all, both directions. Alright, so now the very last thing that we need to do here is add some fillets. So the part has 8mm fillets on the inner edges, there, 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 and there. And it has 2mm fillets on these outer edges of our connector, right there. So let's add the 8mm fillets first. So we'll set our radius to be 8 and we'll just click these four edges here. Be a little tricky to catch it. All right. Looks good with our preview, so we'll hit OK. Now you always want to do fillets last because it can make it difficult to capture geometry and it can cause some errors so it's always just a good practice to do your fillets when you've done all of the other geometry in the part. Alright, so now we'll do our two millimeter fillets. We're just going to select these individual edges here careful not to select the entire face. Alright, that looks good. Hit OK. Alright, and we've successfully completed our bracket. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe 
so you can get notifications about future tutorials on the channel. I know we've had a little bit of a lag in videos in the recent months, but I've had some uh, changes in the homestead. I, we just had our first child, and I've had absolutely zero time to do next to anything. So uh, appreciate your patience on that, and be sure to keep an eye out for more videos in the future. Thank you and have a great day.